Hey guys. Live on time. Ain't no way. New tweet. Go like it so everybody knows that I'm live. There's also a channel point redemption for today. Use your channel points and I will give you advice. Redeem now. Mm -hmm. Hi, Chip. Welcome in. Can we get some yos? Hello. Okay, why'd the music stop? Well, there it is. Okay. <laughs> it's just the comp has awkward pauses. Hi, Electra. Welcome in. Can we get some yos? I'm so excited for today. Hi, Meg. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Meg. Can we get some yos? Hi, guys. Guys, use your channel points and I'll give you advice. Today only. Today only. Free, unsolicited advice. Face cam on in one minute. Hashtag real. Hashtag not clickbait. Also, I got a follower when I was setting up my OBS. Thank you. That was wild. I don't get followers when I'm offline. Or when I'm online. I just don't get followers. <laughs> uh... Oh, wait, guys. While we're waiting, click the link. Open this in a new tab. New YouTube video. It is an edit of the Valentine's Day stream from two years ago. The footage is kind of bad, so I try to sharpen it and enhance it. But it's, try not to fall in love with me, impossible difficulty. <laughs> I was farming. Click the link, open it in a new tab, watch it later. Okay, I have 10 seconds, I'm almost done posting. Gotta let the IG frogs know that I'm live today. Did I stream yesterday? Oh, I went out yesterday. I forgot. Story time. Guys, three to one. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Hope everyone is doing well today. We had Mac, Electra, and Chip, and they're just starting soon. Screen, welcome in. Watch the video before the stream started. Let's go. Thank you for watching on YouTube. No, the YouTube channel is great because now that I finally like have time to go back. And like figure out what streams I need to edit. Weekly videos will happen until I run out of streams to edit. And literally, I have two years of stream vods to go back and edit. So, yeah, thank you, Chip. We love the YouTube frogs more than the Twitch viewers. I'll say it. Okay. Also, I forgot what I was gonna say. Okay, so yesterday I didn't stream because I went out and touched grass. I saw a play, and. <laughs> I'm so dumb. So there's like a few like playhouses in my local area. There's like basically two in every single town that's near me. So I went to the one that was closest and apparently it was like a kid's playhouse. So it was like a kid's play. 
Because, like, I walk into the playhouse, and it only has, like, 200 seats. It's, like, this really small theater, and the stage is, like, this square part in the room. There's no, like, formal stage. So I walk in. It's filled with, like, grandmas and, like, little tweens. And then maybe some college kids. And then during the performance, it was, it was like, little teenagers. Like, little tweens. <laughs> and they were so cute. <laughs> Because, like, you can tell that they're, like, not good. <laughs> but they were so cute. <laughs> it cost me $30. The tickets were $30. But still, you know, support your local theaters, guys. Because, <laughs> like, on the website, it didn't say that it was a kid's theater. I was clueless. Did you feel weird going? I mean, it was whatever. Like, I didn't care too much. Like, the kids did good. I, it felt, like, a little bit awkward, because I'm not gonna say what the play was, but you know how they have, like, kids' versions of, like, adult plays? That's what I think this was. <laughs> oh, no. It was really cute, though. And then after I got food, I went to this little diner place, and I got stuffed hash browns. I'm not gonna say the name, because it's local, but I've been eyeing this diner for a while. And, like, the hash browns came with fruit cup. And I was like, I don't want fruit. So I was like, can I get a different side? And the waitress was like, oh, yeah, you can get um another biscuit or cottage cheese. So I was like, I'll take the cottage cheese, ma'am. She brings the plate to the table. And granted, this was yesterday. I forgot the freaking Super Bowl was happening. So the place, empty. Nobody was there. Because everybody's at home eating their chips and dip, watching the Super Bowl. So nobody was in this diner. <laughs> um... So she brings the food to my table, and what the kitchen did is they just put the cottage cheese into the same cup that the fruit goes into. So I got a heaping portion this big, as big as my forehead, of cottage cheese on my plate. I was like, oh my god. It was like almost two cups worth of cottage cheese. How am I going to eat that all? So I was just nibbling on it. <laughs> That's kind of nasty. I mean, I don't mind cottage cheese because I love ricotta. And ricotta is like a little... It's like cottage cheese, but better. Yeah, so that was yesterday. And then I tipped 15 bucks because I felt generous. My meal was 17 and I tipped 15 You guys can't say that I'm a fake socialist now. I mean, nobody has been saying that. Okay. So that was yesterday. And then I got home. Guys, it's 11-11 Make-A-Wish. I need to get used to looking at my camera. Over there. 11-11 Make-A-Wish. Okay. Now we can get to the meat and potatoes. Yeah, that was basically all I did yesterday. Tasty. I'm moving my water. I don't want to knock it down. I kind of changed my desk setup a little bit. And by that, I mean I just moved my camera. <laughs> okay, are we ready now? So, this is not my YouTube intro. <laughs> I will be editing down today's stream so nobody say any bad words. No bad words today, okay? Okay, so today we're going to be going over this year's Community Valentine's Day quiz and then giving viewers relationship advice. So, for the majority of things that go on today, this you had to pre-submit. You guys had two weeks to submit your little quizzes, and 12 of you did. One of them being my sister, because I needed more questions. So, the roommates make a secret appearance today. Um, so, if you want to do more viewer interactive stuff, make sure you follow my Twitter. I usually will post links on there. I think our next community quiz will be December. I I think this year I want to do a census. Like, where, where I get demographics. That way, whenever I get sponsors, I can be like, this is my demo. Everybody's gay. I don't know. I, I think a census stream is only good if you have, like, a lot of viewers, which... I don't. <laughs> I, I don't know what my viewer count is. Imagine I have, like, a thousand. Imagine. <laughs> I'm Hispanic and gay? Me too! Wait, but only half, because I'm mixed and then bi. 
Is that a lie? Okay. Now, YouTube intro. Oh, wait. Also, even though these were pre-submitted answers, if you still want relationship advice, pin chat, use your channel points, and then type what you want advice on. That's for today only. For any last-minute submitters, you can use your channel points. <clears throat> Wait, I need to write something down. Add a few bits. Or not bit bit, the jokes. Dude, it's gonna be so weird. For all my VODs now, I'm excluding the background music, so VOD watchers are just like hearing crickets whenever I don't talk. Okay. This is my YouTube intro ritual. <laughs> something that like really resonated with me um, I was watching Ludwig's stream the other day, and he was saying how, like, he gets ready to do his, like, intro. And he says he always, like, does a fake smile, and then he goes into the intro. That way, like, he his attitude and his tone sounds more happy. And I'm like, that's really cute. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do for my intro. <clears throat> like, in general. Also, oh my god, I went to the play yesterday, right? And the lady at the ticket booth, she was wearing this exact dress. It was wild. I didn't wear this yesterday, but I got inspired by her. It was really cute. You guys were twins? Imagine. Yesterday I wore my overalls because I wanted to look artsy. Okay. Now I'm ready. I'm so nervous. I hate doing intros live. I also need to record thumbnail. I didn't do that either. Okay. Enough stalling. Let's get started. Okay. <laughs> Whenever I look at the camera. <laughs> okay. Everybody say hi, YouTube. <laughs> I cannot. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. I'm ready now. Okay. I should, like, write it. You know what I need? I need a teleprompter. Who wants to buy me a teleprompter? Type one. Okay. I'm ready now. Seriously, I'm ready. <laughs> I can't. Okay. <laughs> Dude, I can't. Why is this so difficult? This is what happens when I don't click go live for one day. Okay. This is the second annual Valentine's Day quiz that I do with my viewers over on Twitch. So how this works is I made a custom Google form asking some promiscuous and lovey-dovey questions that they answer. If you want to go ahead and fill it out for this year, because this is a edit of last year, go ahead and click the link in the description. That'd be great. Participate this year. Hi, YouTube Pog. <laughs> You're staring hard into the camera. Shut up. That's what the little kiddos like. The, the, that's not what I meant. Okay, anyway. God, I hate this. Okay. <laughs> okay. So before I show this year's results, I'm gonna go ahead and take the quiz myself. <laughs> let's go, let, okay, let's get started. I cannot, also, hi guys, welcome in. Can we get some yo's? Hello, if you have any preferred nicknames or pronouns, make sure to tell me. I see you found the emotes, good job. <laughs> see, I added new seven TV emotes today too, aren't they great? Um, um, okay, you know what? 90% of your jokes won't land, and that was one of the 90. Okay. I go, whoa, whoa. Can we get some yo's? Hello. Okay. So, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and take this year's quiz. Okay, that's the correct scene. There we go. Okay, also, submissions are closed. You cannot fill out the quiz. You had a week. Do it next year. Okay, Peace Ends 2024 V-Day Quiz. Is love in the air? Why? It's that time of year again for the annual Valentine's Day Quiz. This is the second annual. Did this first time in 2023. It's 2024. Answers will be shown collectively and anonymously for a Valentine's Day stream in February. The quiz is open to all my Twitch followers, so make sure you're following me on Twitch, otherwise your submission will be discarded. There will be multiple choice and optional free response, so be mindful with your answers. Since answers will be anonymous, don't be scared to answer honestly. Well, you guys are going to see my answers, so please don't narc no snitches. 
Thank you for helping with this stream idea. Okay, let's go. I'm in. Okay, that's a public email, so that's fine. <laughs> it's fine. That's my art shop email, guys. Check out my website. Click the link. Okay, Twitch username, peace in underscore 17. Do you have a Valentine this year? No. Unless we count your mother. But if I'm being honest, no. <laughs> How many crushes have you had? We asked this last year. I have not had more crushes than last time, but I, it's four plus. I would have a crush most every single year in school, and I would have like one boy and one girl crush, because you know, the bi struggle. So it's, I haven't had a crush in a long time, because you know, I don't go out. I don't do hobbies. It's four plus. Ever confess to someone? Yeah, so many times. I think most every year in high school, because there was three years, I confessed to somebody. None of them worked. And I've only had one person confess to me, and I dated them for almost a year. It was too big short of a year. It was kind of scum, but you know what? It was all, I like to say, I like to round up, it was a year. You're bold. Bold and the Beautiful was my favorite reality TV show, and I got inspo from that. Ever been confessed to? Yes, it was really cute. I've told this story many times on stream. But it was with my old coworker, and what would happen is uh, he would do closing shifts, so like I would stay with him in the back and hang out and help with like work stuff off the clock, which is bad, don't do that. And then we'd walk home together because we lived like two blocks apart, we found out. And there was one night where he was walking me home, and then he's like, hey, can I ask you something? And I was like, what? And he's like, I like you, do you want to go out? And I like... I was shook. I like stopped. I froze and he kept walking. So he walked like 10 steps and then he turned around. And he's like, what the frick? And then <laughs> he walked me home. It was really cute. And he walked me to my doorstep and he was like, can I give you a kiss? And I was like, um, no, because I like had never kissed anybody before. But he kissed my cheek after he asked first. We love consent. He kissed my cheek and I turned red and then I as I was walking inside because you know he was super extra back then um Like it was so cute. He like literally jumped up and clicked his heels for a bit. It was really cute You said no, okay, I had no like I had never had a kiss before okay And then he was really cute and like he waited a week before we had our first kiss. It was really cute that's so cringe. It was my first ever, first and only relationship. Of course, there's got to be cringe in it. Love is real. <laughs> Red flag heel click? Shut up. Does no, okay, does genuinely nobody think that's cute? Let's do a poll. Does genuinely no one think that's cute? Let's see, heel click cute? Nah. Guys, vote in the poll. I think it's cute. You don't click gauge. <laughs> it's not gay. How was? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, the overlay is broken. No quiz. Dang it. Does nobody think it's cute? Come on. It's adorable. Here, I'll vote yes. I think it's cute. Whatever. Whatever. <clears throat> okay. Continuing on. The rest of the story was cute. Whatever. I think it was cute. All of it was cute. Okay, next question. Have you ever been on a date before? Yes. I've only, like, dated that one person. So we only did, like, casual dates. We never went on, like, anything too fancy. Like, I never went to, like, a, a place where you gotta dress up and look spiffy. I think my favorite date of all time was we planned, like, a weekend trip out of town. 
And the first day we went to a zoo and it was really cute. I want to go to the zoo again. Do you pay on the first date? I don't know. I don't know what I would do now because back then I was the one who had money and then he was the brokey. So I usually paid for like any time we went out. But now I'm the brokey. So in terms of now. Okay, okay. I have like a little bit of cheddar. Like I can go to McDonald's. Maybe Wendy's. I can maybe afford like a $15 burger. Okay, I think the nice thing is to offer to pay your own share and then split the bill evenly or pay for whatever you bought. I think that is fair. But if somebody is insistent on paying the bill, I will push back. So the best thing that I try to do to combat that is I'll be like, well, how about I pay today and you pay next time? I think taking turns is fine. And then you should only say that if like the first date goes well, right? Because that's implying that you want to go out again. But if it's like a first date, no, wait, no, 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 no. I think the official rule is whoever asks the person out has to pay because they're anticipating that expense in that time, right? So I guess it depends. Like realistically now, I would pay my own share. It's because, like, I'm a very, like, practical person, and I don't want to feel like I owe them. But if they offer, then I'll fold probably now. Because, you know, i got to save that 16 bucks that's in my checking account. But realistically, if things are perfectly aligned, I would pay for my own share, or we would take turns on dates. Ever held hands? Yes. Ever been kissed? Yes. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. I don't like kissing that much. It makes my lips go numb and I don't like that. It's like too much. I don't, I don't like kissing. Okay. Best way to hold hands. Images courtesy of the Minds Journal. I did not draw these. These are from an article. Interlaced. Down facing palm. Nope. Loosely gripping. Holding onto one finger or not holding hands? <laughs> um, interlaced is like too much. And I got like thick fingers. So interlacing isn't comfortable. Down facing palm is cute. Loosely gripping, I think, is like one of those cute little touches where you're like, it's too hot outside, but I still want to touch you. And then holding onto one finger... Okay, looking at this illustration, this looks like a child's finger, and I don't like that. I don't like holding on to one finger. That's cringe. Not holding hands is, like, normal. I don't think it's, like... I think it's kind of sus whenever people hold hands, like, all the time. So if I'm being honest, loosely gripping. I like that the most. Have you ever written a love letter to someone? Oh my god, I did. <laughs> Wait, I, I totally forgot about this. So I never wrote, like, a love letter to my previous partner. Like, I, I gave them a Valentine's Day card, and that had a little, like, long note in it. But, like, a separate love letter? Dude, this is so bad. I don't know if I told this on stream before. But the person that I liked from junior high to high school, I, like, wrote them a letter during summer, like, writing how much I liked them and, like, how much I missed them during summer break. And I gave it to them on the first day of high school. And, dude, I was so cringe. Like, I gave it to them at the end of the school day, and then I, like, literally ran away. <laughs> and then this person didn't talk to me for, like, three days. And then they just didn't acknowledge it at all. Like, this was a friend. <laughs> dude, I was so stupid and cringe in high school and middle school. Oh, my God. And then I never wrote a love letter again. But looking back, like, that person was kind of like a dick. <laughs> like, in general, like, they were just like a jerk. But you know what? I like the jerk type, and that's bad. Okay. Is love real? Yeah. I see it in the movies all the time. Why would they make movies about fake things? 
Have you ever been in love? Yeah. Love means different things to everybody. But yeah, I'll have to say I was in love. Not anymore. Okay, next. These are the free response. What is the best Valentine's gift or treat to receive? Honestly, a card. I love cards. I like when people, like, actually fill the cards out, though. You know what I mean? The best place to take someone on a date. The movie theaters is the worst. You can't even talk. I think going out to eat is classic. But it has to be, like, some type of activity. So that can mean, like, going on a walk. Going to the park. Doing a hobby that you guys both like. But obviously going on an activity date for like the first date is like too extra. I think going out for coffee, lunch, or dinner for like a first date is normal. But I think going out for an activity will be like the most memorable date you can have. What is the sweetest Valentine's Day gift someone has gotten you? Or have given someone else? Okay, this is another story. <laughs> so I think... The, this was also the sweetest and also like the dumbest gift, but it's also really cute. So me and my partner had one Valentine's Day together. Like we went out for a weekend, you know, had fun, explored the town we were staying at. And I personally got them uh, a mason jar. No, it wasn't a jar. It was, I got them a bag filled with Hershey's, I don't know how to spell it, kisses. So I gave them a bag of kisses, and it was really cute. And then I also made them a card. And then in return, he didn't give me anything, which I didn't want anything. I, I didn't want any candy, or I don't like, like, goodies usually. And then he got me, he got me a card that was made for husbands. <laughs> like, he bought the first card he saw, and it said on the front, my dear husband <laughs> and like he didn't even see it until i opened it it's partially because he was colorblind so like the card was like this muted dark green and then the text was red so he didn't really see the husband part <laughs> but yeah i still have that card i won't show it but i still have it okay the next two are free response that we're going to be doing later. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, these will be answered in a separate video. So click subscribe and you can watch the video maybe next week or two when it comes out. Okay. Do you want any relationship advice? What do I want to know? Even though I am the res Lord. I don't know. I'm perfect. I don't need anything. Like, I was thinking about this question for, like, a week. I don't know. Because I feel like I'm fairly emotionally mature. But I'm also, like, I don't necessarily act on what I think I should do all the time. I'm trying to think. I don't know. No sé qué puedo hacer. I generally don't know. Because, like, honestly, I could just, like, Google stuff and figure out what I need to know. Okay, I I I might have something. <laughs> That's not how you spell trans. Ah. Uh, okay, I'm gonna put how to learn to trust others. Because to break this down, I'm the type of person to where. 
I just have blind faith in most anybody I meet. But then in turn, if I get burned, I still remember that burn, right? That's a big reason why I haven't necessarily like re-entered the dating pool. Because, you know, stuff has happened and I don't necessarily trust strangers as much. And I understand like, objectively, learning how to trust is something you have to learn. And it takes a while to relearn that. Guys, I need help. I don't know. I don't know. Loaded question. Tell me in the comments. Or in the chat. If you could give advice, what would you say? Your mom. Moving on. <laughs> I'll give my real answer later in the other actually giving advice section. Are you subscribed to youtube.com slash at peace in 17? Um, yes, sir. Of course, my other channels are subscribed to my main channel. <laughs> Talking about subscribing. If you're watching this, subscribe. Why not? And if you're watching this on Twitch, also subscribe, but it'll cost you $5. <laughs> okay, so that was all of the questions for this year's quiz. Since you filled out this quiz, all your Valentine's Day wishes will come true. Hashtag real, hashtag not clickbait. Thank you for taking the time to fill out this quiz. I really appreciate you contributing to my stream content. There we go. So, that was this year's quiz, my results. Now let's go ahead and see everybody else's. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that, because the, the, the email I showed on stream, like, that's public. Like, that's my business email. That's why I made this quiz on my business email, in case I leaked, which stupid Google Forms did. L Google Form. It's not a face. Want you to stay with me. It's not a face and it's not a... <laughs> it took so long for my email login to take it, really? That's weird. He probably just had bad internet. But it's also because, like... On my computer, everything is, like, already logged in. It's nice, but also annoying sometimes. I have to be careful when I stream. So I don't leak. I forgot my password? Bruh. How? Also, guys, we are 30 minutes into stream, so if you're new here, click follow. You get cool emotes and you get to type in chat. Can we hit our daily goal? We've already gotten one follower today. It's not on screen, but can we get four more? <sighs> okay. Surely this won't leak. <laughs> Yo, it works. Okay. So I would like to thank everybody for answering. I'm not going to show individual responses, but thank you to everybody who submitted this year. We had 12 people. Thank you. I appreciate you adding to the stream content thank you most all of them are regular chatters shout outs first question do you have a valentine this year 66.7 percent no wait i almost mixed up the colors <laughs> and then a third of you guys said yes i mean it kind of makes sense because like i feel like most every twitch viewer is like a loner so, this makes sense. No comment. How many crushes have you had? 16%? 4 plus? That's me, baby. I'm in there. I love love. 16% said 0. Two people said 0? That's more than last year. I think last year we only had 1. Which means maybe you haven't found somebody or your ace. Which is great. We love ace people. And then the majority, 66% said one to three. Eh, I, I, I don't know what to say. I feel like that's normal. Like, I'm also glad that it's varied. You know, a little bit of everything. Ever confess to someone? 66 
33% said yes. 33% said no. Wait, that's like the same- wait. That's the same stat as do you have a valentine. I wonder what the crossover is. Does that mean... Everybody who has confessed has risen has a valentine this year? Maybe. Ever been confessed to? 83% said yes. 16% said no. That means 83% <laughs> of you guys are cute and 16% are less cute. <laughs> I've confessed and have no valentines? Damn. You know what? You know what I gotta say to that? Get good, scrub. I'm on top of my game. I'm zero for three. No, I'm zero for four confessions, but I got one and then I took it. Have you been on a date before? Majority of my viewers are like young adults or, or teens. Like I'm in the 13 to 35 demographic as with most online platforms. So 41% saying yes, 58% saying no. This is a lot larger than I thought, honestly. Because a date can mean many things. I feel like the modern day, like, Zoomer date is just, like, going to the mall and hanging out. Like, I don't know if many, like, young people do, like, traditional sit-down dates anymore. But majority say no. That's really surprising to me. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is consistent at least. 58% say they haven't been on a date. And then 58% said they haven't been on a date here. That means you guys did not lie. That is very good. Good job. Nobody's getting in trouble this year. Nobody's going preemptively on the naughty list. Okay, so same percentage. 58% said they didn't go on a date. Then that means 42% have gone on a date. So of... Okay, I'm not doing the math. Of everybody, 25% said yes, they pay on the first date. 8.3 said no, and then 8.3 said they will split the bill or pay for their own food. Now, my question is, how much of <laughs> the 25% is hardworking men who only go on dates to please their woman? <laughs> I'm kidding. I think you guys should just, just take turns when you're paying. I want to see specific chatter's answers. No! That's literally, at the start of the quiz, I said I wouldn't do that. Like, I would never leak. I would never share. Okay, moving on. Ever held hands? 75% said yes. Man, look at that. Perfect pie. Ever been kissed? 58.3% said yes. So that means of the hand holders... Like, two or three of you said you did not get a kiss. And you know what I have to say to that? Take this L. Get good, scrub. <laughs> what is the best way to hold hands? 50% said interlaced. 33% said down-facing palm. Wait, nobody said loosely gripping? That's what I said. Firmly grasp it. <laughs> I'm moving on. <laughs> uh, I think it's fair if you both play your part. I agree with that. But then, like, uh, would you say that at the date? Like, the bill comes, the waitress is like, who's paying? And you both look at each other. You whip out your wallets. Like, how? what do you do in that scenario? I don't know. <gasps> A lot of dates don't go past the first. Why would I pay for them? Dude. No wonder you've been single for so long, Mac. <laughs> Not in my own experience. <laughs> surely, surely. <laughs> oh man, I can't. I just scuff up beforehand, be like, this is my portion and I'll cover the dip. What I do when I go out to my friends or my sister is if I have cash, I'll have, because, you know, I'm a brokey. I'm not going to have money till I can open my art shop again. Um, 
I would have them pay for my meal, but then I would pay the tip. I don't just date anyone. Haven't you like banged everyone's mom though? I just dine and dash? No, that's so bad. Okay, I might have like accidentally dined and dashed one time. Story time. So it was me and my previous partner and then his friend. This was my first time meeting this friend of his, okay? I've like talked to him in VCs, but this is my first time meeting him in person. So we went to this K-barbecue place. We all ate a lot of food. And in order to pay, you have to go to like their little kiosk and then pay at the register. So my friend, my previous partner's friend was like, hey, I got it. I'll pay for you guys. And we were like, cool, because it would have been like $25 per person. So like our ticket would have been at least $75. So um, he comes back. He's like, OK, I, I paid. We can go. We can go dip. And we're like, OK, but he's like, you got to walk kind of fast. And we're like, OK, weird. So we walk out, get to the parking lot. We're about to hop in his car. And he's like, guys, we got to go fast. He's like, I didn't pay. And we were like, what the fuck? Like, we we just assumed that he had paid, but he didn't. And then, so we were like, shit. Like, that's $75. So like, and that was a pretty good K barbecue place. Now we can't go back. And so this happened like, oh my God, almost six years ago. <laughs> Holy shit. No way the workers remember us, right? <laughs> so every like once in a while, we would ask this friend, we were like, did you actually make his dine and ditch? And then sometimes he'll say, no, it was a joke. It was a joke. And then sometimes he'll say, no, I actually didn't pay. So like this whole ordeal was this a massive, this whole ordeal was this massive plot to troll us. And it's been five years and he still doesn't have a consistent answer. Anyway, I don't like this friend of the previous partner as much. Also, he lied about getting his vaccine, which is like kind of a big L2. Why did he say he would pay then? Well, this particular friend of the partner was like a little troll, I've come to learn. Like he's done like other little things. Anyway, that's my unintentional Dinah Dash story. I would never dine and dash. Like, I don't... Because, like, you're ruining the server's day. The manager's gonna get mad. And you know the manager's already shitty anyway. I don't... If you have the money, you should not do it. And, like, this friend, he made a lot of money. Like, he made a decent bag at his job at the time. So, wait, my head looks a little hard. Wait. <laughs> yeah, anyway, that's my story. Any back to the quiz. <laughs> Have you ever written a love letter to somebody? 33% yes, 66% no. Okay, how many people are single again? 66%. You know what that means? All of the non writer You know what that means? All of the non-love letter writers get to writing. Make sure it's at least 500 words, double-spaced, times New Roman. That's crazy Simpson chat. No, we just love love, and love is real. Is love real? This is actually crazy. 100%? I think last year we had one person say no, and then I kind of ragged him a little bit. Anonymously, anonymously, of course. That's... Crazy. A hundred percent said love is real. Wow. Does that mean like a hundred percent of you didn't have divorced parents? Like what? <laughs> okay. Have you ever been in love? This one was really cute. 8.3% said no. And I'll be honest. <laughs> This one was my sister. <laughs> I'm a leak. This one was my sister. <laughs> she's never dated. She's never, like, done anything. It's really cute. She told me, like, okay, no snitches, no snitches. But she said she only wants to start dating once she has, like, money to, like, treat her partner well. And I was like, 
that's actually based. <laughs> She's like, I'm not going to be no brokey going out on dates. And I was like, good for you. <laughs> um, and then 41% said yes. Cute. 50% said maybe. That's honestly really cute. What what I have to say about the 50% maybe errs. If you're unsure if you've been in love, then that means you haven't. I have the opinion of you know when you truly care for someone and when they care for you back. If it's a maybe, then either you are too early in a relationship or any previous relationship that you know that it wasn't love. You will know. It's a very cliche thing to say, but you will know. Is she scared to date? No. She's just like, I don't want to be no brokey. I mean, po mainly because, like, you know, she provides for a mate. <laughs> so she and I are like a package deal. She's kind of embarrassed to me because, like, I'm really extra sometimes when I'm with her. She's seeping right now, so. Surely she won't eavesdrop. <laughs> but if she ever did start, I would not, like, follow her on the date. I would not do that. <laughs> Imagine. Okay, okay, let's continue on. Did your roommates take it too? Only my sister. My other roommate was busy. He's been working a lot. He's getting the bag. Okay, next. What is the best Valentine's Day gift or treat to receive? Yeah, I'm just going to read these up. Anything genuine that shows they care for you. Like what? Anyway, Reese's Hearts. Kinder's Egg Jumbo. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, I need to... I need to pause responses. Okay, I forgot to pause it. Now we're good. Now we can continue on. Because I had to reopen it. That way I could take it. I forgot. Okay. Kinder Eggs Jumbo, I think was really funny. Handy things like... Like tools, right? Right? Somebody put no clue. Clueless! Food and plushies. Sweets like chocolate. Flowers and DIY crafts? Honestly, I would do this. I would do this. I love making cards. Box of chocolates. Money! Looks like we got a Mr. Krabs enchant. A lottery ticket or a handwritten letter? This guy? How many letters have you written? Be honest. Tell us in the chat or in the comments. Lottery ticket is so funny. Can I leak? <laughs> Lottery ticket was also my sister. <laughs> like, she's never dated. Why Why would she give somebody a lottery ticket? <laughs> That's so random. She's never bought one. Our dad bought a lot of lottery tickets, but me and my sister have, like, vowed to, like, never buy them. But that's really funny. Because, like, lottery is basically gotchas, you know? Next. Best place to take someone on a date. Someone said Mochina. This is a chain, right? We don't have any in Washington. But there are a few, like, local mochi donut stores. There's one in Seattle, I think, in the Ujimaya. Um, I've never tried it. I really want to try Mochina. I really do. A good restaurant. Okay. So, does Applebee's count as good? I, okay, remember the one TikTok that popped off and, like, the lady was clowning on being taken to Cheesecake Factory? I I get the whole debacle around that situation, but it's like... I'm taking somebody to some $200 steak place on a first date. And you know what? I grew up poor, so Cheesecake Factory is good eating. I went there for the first time, like, nine months ago, and it's, like, decent... It's decent. Nature or restaurant? 
Okay, I should have said best place to take someone on a first date. If someone takes you in nature on a first date, they're going to kill you. I'll say it, they're going to murk you in the woods. Based, um, actually, based on preference, it would have to be a place with activities such as a carnival. Can I leak? This one was wolves. <laughs> now that you guys know it's wolves and shit, like, it's so, like, straightforward. <laughs> it makes sense that he would say that. But honestly, a carnival date is, would be so cute. That's like the classic high school we're dating during the summer type of date. I want to go to a carnival. Who wants to take me to a carnival? Okay, Dollar Tree store. That's just dumb. What if you, like, did one of those videos... Making my first date a, a homemade meal from the Dollar Tree. Now, you would get a first date, possible second, and then a guaranteed banger YouTube video. Picnic at a park. Classic. But, like, guys, eating at a picnic is not it. It's not, like, clean. You're gonna spill in your lap. The grass is lumpy. If you live in Washington, the grass is never dry because it rains all the time. Okay, which, who said abandoned warehouse? Expose yourself. I know who it is, but I want you to come clean. Who did this? Abandoned warehouse. Are you going to do like one of those Aiden Ross streams and then get scammed of two milli? Is that what you want on a first date? Like, come on. Who did that as a hooligan? Wait, is hooligan a slur? <laughs> Someplace quiet. Okay, that's lame. A park? Park would be a very cute date. Like going for a walk and then maybe getting a bite to eat would be cute. Your mom's bedroom? You know what, Mac? My finger is on the ban button. I'm not even kidding. If you could see my screen, my finger is on the ban button. I went on a picnic with my family, not a man. Yeah, because that, like, proves the point exactly. And, like, a picnic blanket isn't big enough for a family, so you guys are probably, like, butt to butt. I want to have a picnic and use wine glasses to eat cake. Dude, that is so, like, Instagram. Like, you just want to be an influencer. Or you've been influenced. Jeez. Again of dissing. Let's continue on. What is the sweetest Valentine's Day gift someone has gotten you? Or that you have given someone else? A friendship bracelet? That's honestly so cute. But I don't think that's like a good Valentine's gift, right? That's like something you get for a friend, not for a lover. This one was really sweet. I don't know yet. I'm waiting to exchange gifts with my GF at the time of writing this, but I know whatever she gets me will be great. Kissy face. Why'd you put this? You have a girlfriend. That's really cute. What if she gives you like shit? Like actual shit. Are you still gonna love it? Okay, well, since we haven't been together for a Valentine's Day yet, we just send each other dinner and rent a movie. Oh, 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 this, this is long distance. America to Canada. That's cute. Like a virtual movie date? That'd be really sweet. Not applicable. Planning to be my own Valentine. Wait, Giga Chad? Or that means you've never had a Valentine? Um, moving on. I give flowers and chocolate. It's very simple. You know what? Very simple based. All the people who say, I don't want to do Valentine's. I don't want to do gifts. You are lame. It's so easy. They have like treats at the Dollar Tree. Just get a little box of chocolates. Maybe a little card. It's really simple. It's easy. It's literally so easy. Somebody did put crying emoji. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Teddy bear with a rose and candy. A single rose like The Bachelor? Somebody said nah. 
<laughs> what kind of rose? Yeah, because isn't yellow friendship, pink is like affection, white is innocence, red is lust. We'll talk about more of that. I mean, no, no narcs, no lakes. We might do a little lesson later this week. Chocolates, simple. But like chocolates isn't very sweet. Like I said, anybody can buy chocolates. If you're going to do a gift, do something with meaning. Something that like someone could like post and make a TikTok and go viral. You know, like something like that. <laughs> and then a custom teddy bear. Oh my god! I think the cutest date, like just in general, would be to go to Build-A-Bear. I've never gotten a Build-A-Bear. I really want one, but like... Going to one by myself is mega cringe. Because the only people that build a bear is couples and like children. So I don't want to look cringe. I really want to go on a build a bear date. I think it would be cute. Who wants to take me? Okay, so there we go. That was all of the multiple choice. We're going to be doing the free response in a different video. YouTube. And then finally. Are you subscribed to my YouTube channel? If you aren't, do it now. And if you're watching on Twitch, click the link and subscribe. It's free. 75% said yes. Thank you to everybody who subbed to the YouTube weekly stream highlights. Nobody will right now, said two people. You know, it's funny. I did not gain a subscriber or even two in the two weeks this quiz was up. What the frick? What the frick? Those are two liars. Or maybe, maybe I gained two, but then also two other people unsubscribed. So maybe they're not liars. And then one person said, no, I have no interest. I'm a fake fan. That was my sister. I'll leak. That was my sister. <laughs> but I, I told her not to subscribe unless she like will watch the videos because dead subscribers is bad. Only sub if you're going to watch the content. Okay, so yeah, that was this year's, wait, YouTube, that was this year's, God, I can't, I can't, okay, that was this year's 2024 Valentine's Day quiz, thank you to everybody who participated, all 12 of you, seriously, thank you, it's really fun looking at the results together and doing it together on stream, and I love doing viewer interaction stuff, it's fun, so thank you, if you like it, I'll keep doing it. I will see you guys next year. And by that I mean I will not click go live until next year. <laughs> just kidding. Why would I never stream again? That'd be silly. What if one day I just like leave? And then never come back. Would you guys be sad? Type 1. Okay, but seriously, thank you everybody who participated. Thank you for watching. Isn't there questions too? Yes. We're going to be doing that now. Wait, two? Wait, did I say type one if you'd be sad? What the... What the freak? Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and do the actual relationship questions now. Okay, new chatter? What is this? You're supposed to be good for a month. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna run an ad just to say screw you. And also, it is time to run an ad. Because we are an hour into stream. So guys, click subscribe. See if you have a Prime sub available. Every hour we every hour we run ads because I have to. So if you want to avoid that ad, all you gotta do is subscribe for four ninety nine, just five dollars. Skip your coffee and get ad previewing all month long. Or you can link the Amazon Prime to your Twitch and hashtag sub for free with Prime. Do it right now. Okay, we're gonna run the ad. When I get back from the ad, we will do the viewer submitted questions. And if you still want to submit a question. Use your channel points at the bottom of your chat box. Or if you're watching on mobile, it'll be here. Does the text-to-speech work? Possibly. I can check right now, actually. Wait, let me test it. No, it doesn't work! So stupid. Okay.
Froggy, it actually doesn't work. Damn it. Dude, I, I swear to God, Twitch is so cool. Scam? It's not my fault. It's not my fault. Literally, none of the Twitch alerts are working. Oh. Oh, that was- that's the wrong thing. Yeah, I'm gonna try and reset it one more time. Okay, it doesn't work. Dude, I hate- Alerts. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Thank you, Kobobo! Wait, what are you saying one to? <laughs> Ooh, that's actually a really good question. Okay, so... I think most everybody's back from the ad now. Oops. <laughs> Wrong side. Yeah, I don't know where I should... Should I be here? No, I should be here. Okay. Yeah, right there. We'll do that. Okay. So, now we're gonna go ahead and do relationship advice. So, if you participated in this year's Valentine's Day quiz, you have the chance to ask and also give relationship advice to me and my viewers. So, I wrote them down on cue cards once again. Very cute. So feel free to screenshot or like make little edits, make little TikTok fan cams. I'm fine with that. So first, we are going to do your guys' advice that you gave me and everybody else. And then we'll move on to direct questions. So I made separate cue cards. And if you're watching right now during the stream, you can use your channel points to ask a question now. So it'll be answered in like 20 minutes. So use your channel points and you can submit a question last minute. And I will be like posing for screenshots at the very end. Okay, so watch till the end. Okay, now YouTube intro is done. So first thing somebody said was be nice. It's the bare minimum. <laughs> I thought this one was really funny. So this person said, be nice. Six exclamation points bare minimum in parentheses this one seems fairly straightforward but oh also this one is from hi hacker <laughs> which is like makes sense i feel like this should be pretty straightforward right like if you are with somebody you should be nice to them but it also kind of alludes to the bigger theme of like abuse and domestic violence um trigger warning i'll put resources in the description there's also a national hotline you can call on a website um, if your partner or even your friends aren't being nice to you, aren't calling you nice things, then that's not a safe situation. They don't truly care for you. And if you are in a space to where you can leave the relationship, it's probably best that you do. Because you never know what things will affect you on later in life and then your future relationships. So be nice to your partner. You don't have to be like overly accommodating. But just be nice. Try to notice little things about them. Go out of your way to do things. You know, the peeling oranges theory that's gone viral this year. Just be nice. And honestly, in the big scheme of things, little things will matter the most. So, be nice. Repeat of last year? Find happiness without your partner. This person said, it's almost impossible to be in a happy and healthy relationship if you can't find happiness without your partner and aren't healthy as a person. This, term, this is from not Mac in chat. I think Mac said this last year, but it's still very prevalent. You have to have your own sense of identity. You can't have your, your spouse or your partner be your whole life. You need to have your own hobbies, the own things that you like, your own aspirations and 
career goals. You can't be doing everything just for them. I think it's also, this is like very prevalent to me now as well. Because most of you guys know I'm technically disabled. I have a big brain and other conditions that are to be determined. I'm going to the doctor tomorrow. Anyway, so in if I ever do pursue someone in the future, like I'm going to have to probably be like very reliant on them. So what I'm trying to do now that, you know, I'm alone, I have to figure out like what my dreams are, what I want my future to be, and try to do as much of that as I can on my own. So yeah, find happiness on your own, guys. Facts? Yeah, of course, because you said it, Mac. The music stopped. This one, I did not like. It seems that both years we've done this, there's been one or two advice that I do not like. This one has red pill energy. Go ahead and rate it. Don't limit yourself to one crush. I'm not going to say who said this, because I don't like it. I don't want any hate threads. This person said, don't limit yourself to one crush. It's best to keep your options open in case one of the crushes doesn't like you back. I think the keyword that can save them is they said the word crush, not love interest. I understand that it's like fairly common if you are like casually dating that you are like dating multiple people. I do think it's very scummy when people who are dating multiple people are like smashing multiple people. I think that is scum because we hate STIs. I think this only is valid and makes sense if you're in a setting to where you're not like actively pursuing multiple people. Because to me, crush is like someone you admire, right? Like someone you see in the halls or maybe like your little work person. You're like, oh, they're cute to look at. But this, I think this is also like kind of valid. Like if your crush doesn't like you back, like don't be too beat up about it, right? It's just a crush. It's one-sided. If it doesn't work out, it's fine. This is only fine if you don't actively pursue multiple people. Like I said, them saying crush makes this, like, salvageable. But this this isn't the best. I feel like if you have multiple crushes, you don't really like those people. That's what I think as well. I mean, okay, obviously people are different. There are individuals who like, who like their crushes based more on, like, aesthetics and, like, how they look. And then there's also people who like the emotional aspect more. I'm definitely one of the people where I have to like the person before I pursue them. Like, I don't want nobody who's going to hurt me. I have to genuinely like them as a friend, typically first, and then romantically. Yeah, this one, I don't like this one. Put it in the trash. I'm so curious to how you said it now. I would never leak. I'm not a leaker. I'm going to make chat smaller. You guys are too tall. Too tall. That's better. Too tall. Also, if you still want advice, use your channel points now. I definitely think having multiple crushes is fine. Because a crush to me means you're not like talking to them. Next. Okay, I'm going to scoop back a little bit. Wait. <laughs> if you're fighting, don't text. Vouch. This is great. Just in general, I hate texting because it's so hard to convey tone. Even with tone indicators, it's so difficult. That's why I use emojis in like most every single text message I send nowadays. But if you're fighting, seriously... Wait a little bit till they're, like, ready to talk and talk things through properly. Or, like, if it's virtual, wait till they're, like, ready to have a call. Because when you're texting, 
usually you can like rapidly send messages so you're not necessarily thinking as thoroughly as you could if you're on the phone and when you're in person fighting or arguing you can like see them like get upset by what you're saying but when you're texting you it's hard to read tones you can't see how they're physically reacting so if you're fighting just wait wait for them to respond to you wait for the late for a phone call wait till you can talk to them in person obviously if it's like more of a dire situation then it can't wait but otherwise wait it out but also don't press the person to talk and communicate because you you genuinely have to wait for them to be ready because if you try to force them to talk that's just going to create more mistrust yeah don't text or just don't text at all texting is dumb Okay, I don't like this next one. Oh wait, sorry. Um, this one was from Rainy Day Games. Next one. Make sure to have good communication. Exclamation point. This is from Kobobo. I think this is the most basic as advice you can give. Why? Because what is good communication? What, what does this mean? Cool Bubble, you're in chat. Tell me what good communication is. Because you don't have a Valentine this year, okay? What does this mean? Because communication is one of those buzzwords. No! No! <coughs> She's gagging you. <laughs> okay, let me fix my camera. What the frick? I had such a good bit. Your cam silenced you, yeah. She. These guys. Okay, don't worry, guys. I think I got hacked. Okay, am I back? I'm back. Okay, where where did I end off on? Okay, I said you don't have a Valentine this year. It means being able to talk things out and saying how you feel. Then say that next time. Don't just say good communication. Because good communication is something that all the little influencers will say as buzzwords. They don't truly explain. Because communication to one person can mean like, oh, I'm texting. I'm literally communicating and telling them. But if the other person isn't receiving what you're saying, if they aren't picking up what you're putting down, then you don't know how to communicate with that person. There's a lot of nuance to this because everybody communicates in slightly different ways. And obviously, as you are dating somebody for longer, you'll learn how they communicate. So I think your best arsenal, your best toolkit, is understanding how you yourself communicate best. And then from your family, friends, learn how they also communicate. That way you can take what you learned to any relationship that you have. Please calls my user all out, but not the other one. No, this is like, okay, this is still like good advice, but it's like, it's a level three not, okay. You know how in school they have like difficulties? This is like a level three answer when I want a level four or five. Give me, give me more mean potatoes. You know, this is too basic. <laughs> but thank you, GoBobo. <laughs> You're getting roasted. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you did this quiz last year, Kobobo. <laughs> You'd think you could pass better this year. Okay. <laughs> it's a Google questionnaire? Shut up. You want to make a whole website next time? I didn't want to put the same answer. I was gonna say like have you not learned anything in a year like come on <laughs> okay okay next this one i think was really good be honest with your intentions be honest with your intentions like with what you want from the relationship this is from the ruby specifically my sister because i made her sit down and take the quiz because i didn't have enough answers 
So first she put be honest. And I was like, okay, that's like a first grade answer. Like, what does be honest mean? I was like, you're an adult. You just turned this age. She's an adult. <laughs> She's a few years younger than me. So she was like, well, I don't know. And I'm like, no, break it down. Like, what does be honest mean to you? Because that can mean different. Hey, what the frick? I'm getting hacked. Like, seriously, I'm getting hacked. <laughs> well, I'm back. This, it's because this capture card for my camera is the old one. It's actually a discontinued capture card now, so. They don't have any, like, updated drivers, so it's, like, really stupid. Okay, anyway, what was I saying? Okay, legit, what was the last thing I said? Anybody? Can somebody help me? What was the last thing I legit said? Somebody help me. <laughs> what did I say? I think I said. Okay, it's fine. I'll just I'll just reset. I'll reset. I'll reset my run. I can only redeem one relationship advice. You want to do two? <laughs> Oh, you said that with your sister? Okay, thank you, Kobobo. Cool, anyway, I'll, I'll restart from there. Editor, just trim. Just trim. So I made my sister sit down and take the quiz. And she initially, for this part, said, be honest. And I turned to her and I said, that's like a first grade answer. What does be honest mean? And she's like, I don't know. And I was like, okay, break it down. Because be honest to you might mean something different to everybody else. And then she was like, well, if you are going to, like, date someone... You don't want to, like, want different things, or if you're going to do Tinder, you don't want to, like, smash and then like them later. And I was like, that's a very good point. <laughs> and I think that is so prevalent, because, like, you know the cliche of, oh my god, we are smashing, we found on Tinder, and I somehow love them now. Like, you can't go into a situation wanting different things, because ultimately, you are going to get hurt. If you are pursuing casual relationships when you truly want something long term, you're only going to hurt yourself. And then the other person is going to lead you on. And that's just going to leave a bad taste in your mouth. And also vice versa. If you are looking for something more meaningful and you're only doing hookups, then maybe you aren't doing the right thing either. And I think this is also prevalent in like, especially when you hit my age, like the 25 to 30, where... You know, everybody's getting married, everybody having kids. You need to, like, sit down and seriously think about what you want in your life. And you need to determine if whoever you pursue will align with your goals and aspirations. Like, don't be sitting down at the first date being like, I want five kids or I want a mansion. Like, have those things in the back of your mind. But if you see that your partner or whoever you're dating doesn't line up with that you need to communicate that you need to express what your goals are and see if you guys are on the same page yes there could be compromises <laughs> shut up Electra. i'm not <laughs> i'm not having kids dude if i had a kid it would cripple me more it would be so painful also there's like so much stuff about childbirth that like they don't tell you Look up the husband stitch. And also, like, I think it's really funny when men are like, ooh, I want the baby. But then they don't support their their spouse when they're, like, pregnant. Or I, I also think it's unfair how in the heteronormative society, like, men are less entitled to maternity leave when, okay, I didn't know this. I'm not going to say this on screen. I didn't know this. But if you were, like, breastfeeding your child, you have to pump, like, every two to three hours. It's... I didn't realize it was that intense. 
Like, no wonder they can't sleep. No wonder the baby's always hungry. You have to... No, you don't have to feed your baby that often. Yeah, it leaks. I knew that it leaks, but, like, I didn't know you had to pump that often. And pumping, allegedly, really hurts. It's like someone is nibbling for, like, 20 minutes straight. And I don't want to do that. And, like... Oh, okay, okay. You guys know the... the, the, the the TikTok user who is, like, making a list of every single reason why not to have a kid. Apparently, like, your nipples are, like, permanently, like, shaped differently. I don't know how else to say it. Like, um, any girlies. I'm sure you've, like, taken a bath with your mother at some point. Like, they look like that all the time. I didn't know that. Anyway... And also, like, it can mutilate your genitals. It's, for, for, for the girlies, it's, like, not worth it. Genuinely, it's not worth it. And I always told myself, if I ever have a kid, which I'm not, I, do, I genuinely don't want to physically give birth. I'm already fat, though, so... <laughs> Who here is taking a bath with my mom? Um, at not Mac and Chat. I was gonna say. There was one more little anecdote. Oh, if I ever have a kid, I would adopt. I know the adoption system is bad, but in my opinion, theoretically, if a family has to go through heavily vetting to get a child in their family. I think that makes sense, right? But then I know there's also, like, a lot of exploitation in, like, shitty foster parents. So it's like, I don't know. I don't know what's the right thing to do. How about how about just no kids? How about, how about we just go extinct? <laughs> I don't know. Also, like... Getting a sorority mother? Is that what it's called? It can cost up to, the range is like 50,000 to 100k for one baby. Dude, I knew you had to be richy rich to get a sorority. Surrogate. Why did I say sorority? <laughs> Wait, sorority is like the college <laughs> clicks, right? <laughs> See, I don't, any, I don't know any I don't know any of this. I'm not going to have a kid so I, I'm not educated. Because one of my friends was like, I want to get a surrogate mother. And I was like, okay. That's going to be a lot of money. 50000 to to 100k per baby. Like, you, you have to be privileged to get a surrogate mother. Anyway, be honest with your intentions. <laughs> Lord, please. I don't want a kid. Mm-mm. And also, like, it's unethical to post your kids on social media, so, like, what's the point? Like, seriously, if I can't post them for clout, why should I have one? Then you have to pay for food and clothes? I mean, I gotta do that for myself anyway, right? You know what's crazy? Okay, I don't know why I'm going off screen like this. I just think this is funny. You know how you get your tax return? The, ch the child tax credit for, like, low-income families who have a kid? Depending on, like, the year and the legislation, you can get upwards of, like, a $1,000 to 18... I think they're raising it to 1800 this year. Um, I think right now it's sixteen or 1500 per kid. So that means every year my parents would be, like, peace in... Peace and sister, we have no money. We cannot buy you new clothes this year. They would get a tax credit every year of $1,000. What? You know, I conspiracy, I think that's why all the little southern people have like a million kids. <laughs> Not the auto mod. Electra, you didn't even get modded. You just got deleted. You need a kid to take over your Twitch? No, in order to stream, you have to be 13. Like, the, the TOS concerning kids on Twitch is you can have them, like, 
on screen, you just can't have them be the focus of your content. Like if you have a like a little baby in a crib behind you, like that's fine. If you have like a little toddler walking around in the background, that's fine. You just can't have the kid be the streamer. <laughs> 13 feels low, I agree. I personally have the opinion that no minor at all should be able to stream. I think it's very interesting because when you have Twitch money, like when you get subscriptions, guys, click subscribe, give me money. When you have subscriptions, you technically get a 1099, which is you're a contractor, like you're a contracted worker, basically, from Twitch. So how come the kid can be a contracted worker when in some states, like, it's not legal for a minor to work? So I think logistically, I don't think it makes sense for a minor to be a streamer. Like, get the bag, but also, like, ethically, like, I just, I think either kids, minors should not stream at all, or they should not have monetized channels. Th that's just my opinion. Because streaming is a job. Like, you get a 1099, you're basically a contracted worker. And, you know, kids should be just, like, going to school. And going to clubs. Anyway, that's my opinion. Okay. Next up. <clears throat> know your worth you deserve the world don't settle this person said please in all caps know your worth you deserve the world and don't settle for anything lower you are in caps in fact that bitch from dino crystal enchant once i read this answer i knew it was them <laughs> i think this is something that it feels like fake to hear, but sometimes you need to hear it to hype you up. Everybody has like self-esteem issues. Everybody's sad and depressed. And you know what? Sometimes you need someone to gas you up. This is what you say to your friend when she like is going through a breakup or when her, her like boyfriend is a jerk. Yeah, this was cute. This was cute. And, hmm, thank you for redeeming, Mac. I don't know how to phrase this. The only thing I don't like about this type of sentiment in general is that people will go into relationships wanting more than they can get, I think. Because then you're going to run into an issue of having, like, this perfect person in your mind but more likely than not, that person doesn't exist. Like, if you want a mansion, if you want a sugar daddy, yeah, you can probably find that. But for whatever complex person you're thinking of in your mind, you're probably not going to easily find that. So not saying that you should settle. Like, obviously, you have your own boundaries and red flags that you adhere to. But don't dismiss somebody just because they don't check all your boxes if you're gonna dismiss everybody who doesn't match your ideal type then you aren't gonna be with somebody for a long time probably so have like a set like smallest of things that you like and admire in a, in a person and then try to go with that list and then make exceptions <clears throat> Communicate your feelings. This person said, It's a very tired thing to say, but communication of feelings. This is from Af Sao Dauda. Going back to the theme of communicating is like the basic. But I think that since this person specifically said communicate your feelings, I think this means like being truly honest, going back to the honest with your intentions, and then also, like, being able to feel vulnerable with somebody else. Obviously, like, don't trauma dump on a first date. Don't do that. But don't be afraid to open up to, like, your friends or your partner over time. Because 
Vulnerability, in my opinion, builds trust. And then also, whenever you open up to somebody, you'll see how they receive it. And then you can truly tell if they do care about you as much as they say they do. Because it's very easy to say, oh, I love you. But then when hardship comes, are they really going to stick around? So before, like, true hardship comes out, you need to know how they'll receive and maybe reciprocate your feelings. Who said this one? This was a new follower. So this person followed and filled out the quiz on their own. So we haven't seen them in chat yet. This person followed like literally eight hours ago. So maybe they saw it on Twitter or on YouTube. So new follower. But seriously, thank you. This one blew my mind. Genuinely, this next one. Re the word friend is still in boyfriend. This person said, in quotes, friend, end quote, is in the word boyfriend slash girlfriend for a reason. Don't waste your time on someone who can't be there for you. From Mother Electra in chat. This one, when I read it, I was literally shook. Oh my god. I was like, I had been looking for a way to word this for the longest time. Because something that I've been preaching for like forever is whichever person you pursue has to be emotionally mature. Like you have to trust that they will be willing to communicate, to be there for you, like be a support along with like a romantic person. Like obviously smashing is fun, but you need somebody who will be there for you through the hard times. So when I read this, I was like, holy moly. It made so much sense. But yeah, that's why I think a lot of married couples who are still married will say that their their wife or their or I think that's why a lot of married couples who are still married will say that their spouse is their best friend. And if you think about it, it makes so much sense. Because once you get married, you're going to be spending a lot more time together. You're probably going to live together at some point. You're also going to be isolating yourself more so. Because when you have a partner, like whether casual or serious relationship, you're probably going to be spending less time with your friends. So then indirectly, your partner should become your best friend. And truly, like... I don't understand the relationships where, like, I only married you because I think you're hot. Like, I know that doesn't happen often, but it's so stupid. Like, if you're going to be spending literally your whole life and, like, so much of your day-to-day -day with this person, you have to be friends with them still. Yeah, this, I think, is the best thing I've ever read. Hashtag real. Hashtag I'm not lying. I will say this from now on. Okay, this is the final viewer given advice. After this one, it will be, I will give you advice. So this is your last chance. Use your channel points now. If you want any last minute questions. And Kobobo, if you have anything else you want to ask, um, wait, I'll just re-enable it. I forgot, I don't have the capture on screen. Here, I'll make it redeemable more than once. Okay, Kobobo, refresh your tab. If you want to submit another one, you can. <laughs> okay, thank you, Kobobo. <laughs> yeah, farm as much as you want. You can make this stream as long as you want. Okay, okay. Thank you guys for redeeming. Okay, final viewer given advice. Wait, this is from me. I forgot. Establish and uphold your boundaries. This one I think is really important. Because everybody's yapping, like, boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. But you don't know how to communicate. And then also, you need to actually be firm with your boundaries. If you don't like something, you have to communicate that. And then if after you communicate, the person doesn't reciprocate or doesn't listen to you or follow through in their actions, then they don't respect you. To be blunt, they don't. Because respecting other people's boundaries comes down to empathy. If they aren't able to understand what you are feeling, what you are going through, 
and not do what you request, if it's reasonable and they still don't do it, they don't respect you. Going back to the friend and boyfriend, your partner has to respect you. Not everybody is going to be like super emotionally mature, especially if you're young. But if you don't like something and they do said thing, you need to be firm about it. Because if you let them get away with it one time, they're going to keep doing it. And it can be something as simple as like asking to do the dishes. That's not necessarily a boundary. But in that specific scenario, if you're like, hey, you know, we both work. I do trash and you do dishes. If, if they aren't empathizing with you that, okay, we're both tired. We should both be evenly doing things and they don't want to do the dishes, then they aren't thinking what you're thinking. They don't understand what you're feeling. I'm trying to think of like a more specific example for boundaries. Hmm. Okay, I think I have one, a better one, better example. Everybody has a little cell phone, right? You're, you're probably texting your partner all day. A boundary that I personally have with like my friends is that please don't message me past 8 p.m. I'll be honest, I go to bed at like 8 now, <laughs> but I usually knock out at 9 or 10. And I think that is a relatively healthy boundary because you don't want to have direct access to anybody at any given time. Yes, if there's an emergency, like, yeah, you can call them, like, that's fine. But you should not need that attention all the time. Not messaging past eight is crazy. Well, I wake up at like five or six. So I'm usually like bed at that time anyway. Um, because in that specific example, that's a, that's a boundary for me. Because I like having a little bit of absence to where when I get that good morning text, it feels more like impactful almost. And I, I, I tell people to only message me past that time if you like truly need someone to talk to or if there's an emergency. And nobody has really pushed that boundary. But I know if anybody did, I would have a conversation about it. I don't know. Is, is this why I'm single? Is this why? Because I don't text past eight? Imagine. Okay. Now. I'm going to go ahead and do um, the asking for advice. So since we got three new ones, I have to write new cue cards. Oh, that camera froze to Pog. So guys, while I'm setting up the new camera, go ahead and click the follow button if you're new here. You get cool emotes and you get to type in chat. Whew. Oh my god, there's two of me. Kids bank. So I'm gonna write new cue cards. So, how are you guys liking the stream so far? Is it good? Type one. I'm a little BTS, not the band. So when I'm writing on my cue cards, all of the letters on the, oh, it's flipped. All the letters are about three quarters of an inch wide. So I just made a little guide. You see the little dots across my regular eight and a half by eleven. That way, all the cue cards have like similar spacing for the most part. Okay, I need my shoppy a marker. Mm 
Now you can see how I do calligraphy. Last year I didn't do this. It's because I can't see my viewer count, but I think I've had more viewers than last year's. Or about the same. I don't know. Okay, let's see. I'm going to paraphrase some of the cue cards. Okay, this person said, how many red flags until I should stop liking someone? I'll paraphrase that to how many red flags is too many? <laughs> I think the answer, the question kind of answers itself, honestly. Okay, so how many? Okay, when you're thinking of sign design, you have to thinking, you have to think, you have to think of how everything looks composition wise. Out of all my art lesson, ain't no way. Hi, Isha. Alerts are broken. So I will say it. Say psych right now. Thank you for the two years. That is insane. Can we get some whistles in chat? Thank you, Issa. Two years? Thank you. Seriously, thank you. You should get a new badge besides the founder. But thank you, Issa. Thank you, hon. Thank you. Okay, so to break down... I'll go full cam, that way it's not flipped. To break down, like, how I... I was 17 when I started watching you. Um, Twitch Dev. <laughs> that means you're almost 20. Hi, you're old. <laughs> Hi, is uh... Okay, so to break down how I choose to stylize the cue cards. So, I usually, as you can tell, do the keywords in pink or red. And then you have to think about how you want to break up the other words. For majority of the cards, I did centered format because, you know, it's clean. It's clean. So for this card, I chose to do someone and then crush on them in all pink. I was going to do just crush in pink, but then I felt like if I did on them in the regular black font, it wouldn't have been as balanced or I would have had to put it on the next line because I try to get the cute cards only four lines tall because that way I have space to like grab it with my hands on the bottom. And then on some of the other cue cards, there's like uncentered. Oh, this one is another good formatting. Friend is still in boyfriend. See how this one is aligned left, aligned centered, aligned center right. That way it has that natural left to right movement. Um, I don't know. Whenever you're doing calligraphy, consistency has to be important. So that means consistent width and then height of your lettering. I didn't use a ruler because I think a little bit of unevenness is nice, but I still tried to keep my letters the same width. I don't know. Um, back to the lessons. So for this cue card, this person said once again, how many red flags until I should stop liking someone? So that is about like 40 characters of letters. That's not gonna fit on this cue card. So I'm gonna condense it to how many red flags is too many? Saying the same thing, basically. So how many red flags is too many? So I usually kind of go like this. I try to draw it in my head. So probably how many can go on the first row. So how many? And then red flags, because that's the key word. I'll do that in the center with the pink or red. And then is too many, probably on the third line. So this is going to be... How many red flags, because how many red flags has probably about the same character count, so that's going to be about the same width. And then is too many is probably going to be about the same, if not more characters than the first two lines, or first one line. So everything is probably going to be probably centered here. I don't know. I It's hard to break down how I draw. But whenever you're doing any type of signage calligraphy, you have to think about alignment and how everything kind of correlates or literally is aligned with each other. So since I want to do how many on the first line, I usually count how how many characters it is. So H-O-W space M-A-N-Y. That's eight characters. And then, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So probably two spaces from the edges, so H-O-W space M-A-N-Y. Yeah, two spaces from the edge.
So right now I'm trying to line up my letters with, you can't really see the dots on camera, but the dots I have up here as a guide. And as I said, I'm not going to use a ruler to get perfect alignment because I want there to be that little bit of like human character to it. Okay, notice how I write my M. I'll do it one more time. So instead of doing one stroke, because whenever you do one stroke with an M, you're not going to have a consistent shape unless you're like really good. Because a lot of you want to do M's, like see how that right here split is wider than this one. So when I do M's, I usually do... And then, oh wait, one more time. <laughs> Middle, bottom, back up, and then I lift up my utensil and do that again. Because whenever you're doing this in one stroke, you have to move your fingers. You have to curve your fingers. So if you do one upside down U shape and then lift up and then the other upside down U shape, you usually get a more consistent stroke. Anyway. Keep in mind, this is all like stuff I just think about in my head when I draw or write. I think that's why a lot of people don't like vocalize how they work. Because if you don't have like an artsy mind, you don't necessarily get it. Similar thing with the Y. I did the upside down curve shape and then I lifted up my utensil and did that again. Look how perfect that is. It's flipped. Okay, then how many red flags? Let's do that in red, actually. And then the calligraphy letters are about an inch wide. Yeah, it'll probably stick out to here and here. I'm going to do a cursive F here. Okay, I'm going to make this tail a bit wider. Okay, not necessarily perfectly centered. But the R sticks out a little past the H, S sticks out past the Y. Almost perfectly centered just by visualizing. Okay, how many red flags? And then is too many. I, S, space, T, O, O, space, M, A, N, Y. 11 spaces. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay. Let me run that back again. One, two, three, four, five. Wait. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so since it's an odd character amount, it's not going to be like perfectly centered with this guideline. So I have to start my eye here. And my finger is about a half inch in diameter. So that's another way to measure. You'll see like, you know the cliche using your thumb to paint? Because that'll be like a consistent ratio point. How many red flags is space? Oh, I forgot to count the question mark as a character. Dang it. Oh, well. I don't have as much time to center. 
Yeah. There's a lot of empty space here, but that's because this line isn't fully flat. I tried my best. It's hard to do these last minute, because I think the cue cards, writing them all out earlier, took about an hour. Okay, so... Anyway, that's how you do calligraphy. I'm going to speed run the next few. And yes, my handwriting normally is atrocious. An hour? Yeah. Is that bad? I don't know. Oh, and then I forgot. In all the little rounded shapes, I like to put a little heart. Just to be cute. There we go. Now it's done. Get next cue card. Where'd my paper go? Get next cue card. Okay, the next one is, how soon is too soon to getting into a relationship? How can I condense it? Because that's too many words. When should I get in? How soon is too soon to getting into a relationship? What does that mean, though? Like, does that mean... Okay, Koboba, cool, since you're here, break it down. Does that mean, like, enter the dating pool? Or go from, like, casually seeing someone to, like, officially dating. Once you answer that, I'll make the cute card. Because then I can, like, break down the question more. Okay, next one is, what if my partner snores at night? <laughs> that one's funny. Okay. Okay. What if my... Okay. I'll do, what if my partner snores? There we go. W H A T space I F seven W H A T space I F a little bit off centered. Okay, so from meeting to boyfriend. Okay, that makes a bit more sense. Oh, that's not centered at all. Oh, that's off. I hate that. Instead of doing centered, I'll just do a line left. I messed this one up. <laughs> I usually would just like reset. And grab a new paper, but I don't want to waste more paper. I'm running out of cardstock. Because before I moved out, I took like a whole ream of paper from my dad. <laughs> and I'm almost out of cardstock. <laughs> yeah, just a line left to salvage this. What if my partner and then snores? Now notice how I didn't make partner the pink word. Keyword is snores in this question. Okay, and then the full question was what if my partner snores at night? Okay, and then the last one, 
You can still use your turn points. If anybody's watching, you can still redeem last second. Since you clarified how long to wait from meeting to boyfriend, I think the best way to phrase that question would be, when do I define the relationship? I know that's like not word for word what you said, but I think contextually that is the best way to phrase it. So when should I define the relationship? So define and relationship are probably going to be the keywords. Okay, when should I? W-H-E-N space S-H-O-U-L-D. That's really long. Space I. 13. Okay, this one's gonna... Oh, maybe do when should I define the relationship? I kind of want to do left align. When should I define the in black and then relationship? That way it's a bit little... That way it's not symmetrical. I like that. Another left align. Because since I'm kind of pressed for time, I don't want to do like perfectly centered cute cards. And for these cue cards, I like doing the I in lowercase, because then I get to dot it with an I. When should I? Oh, wait, the will fit here. It'll just stick out a bit here. Oh, that sticks out too low. I messed up on the H. It's fine, I fixed it. When should I define the... Then relationship. Perfecto. And then the exact quote was, how soon is too soon to, you put getting, I'll put get. Get into a relationship. Okay, that was our final question. Putting that in my pile. We have about eight questions to get through. That's a lot. Content. Okay, guys, sorry to stall for longer, but we are two hours into stream so it's time for me to run some ads you can avoid that ad by subscribing for 4.99 just five dollars skip your coffee and get ad free viewing all month long or you can excuse me you can link amazon prime to twitch and hashtag sub for free with prime click subscribe see if you have a sub available after the ad i'm going to answer your relationship questions okay thank you for waiting I would have just like read out the new questions, but I think having a cue card is cuter. Yeah, 
I'm going to skip this song because it has too many vocals in it. Okay. Now that we've done... Okay. Now that I've read all the advice that my viewers gave me and chat, I'm going to go ahead and answer your guys' relationship advice inquiries. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, the classic, how do I tell someone I have a crush on them? I mean, it's pretty easy. You just tell them you like them. You pull them into your group chat and then you have your friends flame you. And then you confess. Easy. I've confessed to so many people. Like, honestly, what's the worst that could happen? They say no. Uh-oh then you know you can just like have a new crush. You know what I mean? Because if it's a crush, you aren't dating. You have nothing to lose. If it's a friend, then yeah, minus one friend, but you probably wouldn't have been able to stay friends anyway if you held it back. So just just do it. Shia LaBeouf, just do it. Tell them you like them. Maybe make them a little card. Say what you like about them. And just go for it. It's pretty simple. If you want a script, you can be like, hey, blank, I like blank, blank, blank about you. How about we go to the park and ride skateboard? Or how about we go get coffee? There you go. All you gotta do is copy and paste. Simple. Next. What if my partner snores? I'm gonna self-report. I snore. <laughs> I snore really loud. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> I know this because my sister and a previous partner told me I snore so loud. I get it from my dad. I just hope one day I don't need a CPAP machine. Like, if they snore, <sighs> you can, if you're rich, get a separate bed and a separate bedroom. Or you can get some little earplugs, you know, shove them in your ears. Or have your partner get a sleep study because maybe they need a CPAP. There are lots of solutions, okay? Snoring is like whatever. I'm used to people snoring around me too, like my dad. Oh my god. He snores so loud, like you can literally hear it across the house. My mom, I feel so bad. <laughs> But then once he got his CPAP, like, it was fine. It was literally fine. So yeah, just having them take a sleep study easy. Okay, also, I'm going to change my title. I forgot to change my title. Giving my chat relationship advice. Hashtag real, hashtag not clickbait. Giving my chat, I'll put free. You know, everybody loves the word free. Next. Online dating. When should we meet in purpose? Ain't no way. A prime sub? Holy moly. Thank you. Thank you. Can we get some wackos? <laughs> Thank you for the prime. Thank you. Also, follow the channel. Why are you subbing without following? Um, If you follow, you can type. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yo, we got a follower. Plus one. Wait, it didn't show up. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. <laughs> no, you're fine. I just saw your name and I got scared. Hello. Welcome in. But you know what? Since you subbed, you can like type right away. I got scammed. Um, no, you didn't. No, you did not. I followed and nothing happened. No, you know what happened? I said hi. And that's enough. All my alerts are broken, I swear to God. Wait, that resub worked. TTS doesn't work, though. I'll read out your message. You said, did you say something with your sub? No, you didn't. That's more than enough? Oh my God. Thank you. But thank you. Welcome in. If you have any preferred nicknames or pronouns, make sure to tell me. Guys, don't, like, spread propaganda that I'm a scammer. I don't need that right now. But thank you. Okay. Back to work. What was, what was I saying? <laughs> okay. Online dating. When should we meet in person? 
This person said, how soon do you think you should meet in person if you're online dating? I don't know. I genuinely don't know. Like, I've only dated in person. I genuinely don't see myself ever dating online. Because, like, I'll be honest, I love hugs. Like, they're very cool. And I hate texting. So, like, if I were to date somebody online, like, I wouldn't text them enough, I think. And I think that would cause rifts in the relationship. But, like, my biggest fear is, like, what if they're, like, bad or scary? It is really cute, like, seeing people who date online, like, meet in person. Like, seeing the, the videos where they're at the airport and they fly into each other's arms. That's generally so cute. Okay, in, a, like, a traditional relationship, the honeymoon phase is three months. So, usually, if you get past the three-month hump, you're solid. So I think if you're dating somebody online and you're able to like stay actively engaged and like still enjoy your conversations at like the three to six month mark, then I think that's like fine enough to meet them in person. I don't, I've never dated online. So I don't know. I don't know. Three months. I don't know. But like if you're dating online, like you're probably a brokey and can't visit them all the time. So. I don't know. I'm going to say three months. I'm going to say three. You give me Moana vibes? You know what? I think I give more... What's the girl from... Esmeralda? Is that her name? I've been told that I should do... What's her movie? Legit, I, I cannot remember. I cannot remember. You know what's funny? My mom is from Hawaii. I thought honeymoon phase was a year. No, honey, it is not a year. <laughs> oh my god. If you were like so infatuated with somebody that you were like still like giddy and like excited about everything you do with them for a year, either you were like clueless or you really think love is love and real. Oh my god, a year. Holy moly. That I've never heard that. It's not a year. <laughs> Encanto? Yes, thank you. I've been told I should do Esmeralda cosplay. Encanto is the movie, but no, I, I will not do cosplay. I don't know. <laughs> okay, next. When should I define the relationship? I did paraphrase this question a little bit. This person said, how soon is too soon to get into a relationship? I don't know if I'm qualified to answer this because I've only dated one person. <laughs> and that person was a friend, right? And I think whenever you are pursuing someone who is a friend, you, oh, you kind of always skirt the line of you still care for each other, but just not necessarily romantically until later on when you know them, right? When I say define the relationship, I think the standard meaning is like being exclusive. Because it's common for people, if you're casually dating, where you just like will hook up with multiple people and that's normal. I don't necessarily like that. I don't like STIs, you know. But that's just common. Because you don't necessarily know which other people you're pursuing will, like, you, you don't know who's going to work out, right? I don't. I don't date like that, so I don't necessarily understand it. But to me, defining means exclusivity. And I think you should define the relationship when you feel like you know the person at like more of a human level. Because if you're just hooking up, like you're smashing, you're obviously attracted to them. Or if you're just dating, you're, you're probably still attracted to them. But once you see like a little glimmer of their morality, or I guess they're like... Okay, I was going to say consciousness, but of course they're alive. <laughs> That's not the right word. Um, but when you see them, or when they share an opinion that you like truly resonate, or a perspective that you really connect with, that's when I think you should try and be exclusive. Like, if it's someone that you can see yourself being with for like months or years on end, that's when you should take the step and be like, hey, let's... You know, let's not smash anybody else. Let's become boyfriend, girlfriend, or girlfriend, girlfriend, or boyfriend, boyfriend, or partner, partner, you know? 
So whenever you want to be, when you genuinely want to be exclusive and you aren't like wanting to pursue anybody else. This one is interesting. Okay. How do I know they're in love? This person asks, what subtle signs do you think people give out to show that one is in love? Controversial. You will see little videos or read books of people being like, oh, if they do blank, blank, blank for you, then they love you. Love means different things to different people, right? There's also so many different love languages. Like, it can be physical touch, words of affection, gifts, tasks. Like, there's so many different things and ways that people can show. And there's obviously ways that you receive those different ways of showing affection. I don't think there's, like, a die-hard list of things to know when your partner loves you. But I know for me, I, like... Okay, this is gonna be cringe. But, like, I literally felt it i felt it in my gut because uh, <laughs> you, you almost feel like this like internal yearn when they're not around and then also like a sense of like enlightenment whenever you are around them i think it's also difficult because i'm the type of person who like will literally feel my feelings like i feel a sensation for most any like emotional state I'm in it it's weird or maybe I'm just like too empathetic I don't know but how do you know when they're in love with you you'll know and if you have to ask then you haven't felt it yet keyword yet it could still happen like don't give up on it yet it'll happen Oh, we have two more left. Simple. How do I communicate better? Simple. <laughs> no, it's not simple, actually. As I talked about earlier, you need to know how you yourself communicate and how you receive information, whether it be like verbally or like subtle signs, right? And then from that point on, you will learn to pick up how the other person communicates. There are like more straightforward forward ways on how to communicate better. Obviously, like trying to compose yourself with empathy, like understand how you feel, how other people perceive how you feel, and then also try to assume what the other person is feeling. Because that at its core is what empathy is. Being able to understand what other people are going through and then also trying to Think to yourself what that what that experience will be like. So if you want to know how to communicate better, you have to learn how to empathize on a on a human level. And you can do that by having more discussions, literally asking people how or why they think the way they do. I will do this with my sister a lot, where I'm like, okay, you said something simple. How about you try to break it down? Because different things, well, this may mean one thing to you, but then a totally different thing to me. And I think in order to, like, communicate well, you do have to listen, but you have to actively listen. So even if you're sitting, like, looking, like, some nods, some smiles, some gasps will help them. Because that shows that you're receiving what they are telling you. Just some simple things. Just try to live your life with empathy, and I think you'll be fine. Final question. How many red flags is too many? This person said, How many red flags until I should stop liking someone? Honey, if you are asking how many is too many, then there's probably, like, too many already. <laughs> Um, I don't think there's a definite number. Because for some people, if they see one red flag, they'll dip. 
which I don't think necessarily is, is as healthy either. Going back to the point of you can't necessarily have the perfect person. Nobody can be the perfect person in your mind. Like, that would just be yourself then, right? So, it's to me, it's not like the amount of red flags. It's what the red flag is. If the red flag is calling you at work and you don't like that, that's something, that's a behavior that can be changed, right? But if it's like a red flag where they are being verbally manipulative or abusive, then that's not good. Like that's a huge red flag versus a smaller one. If you want a number, if you want to write this down and put it in your abacus, I would have to say one major flag is too many. A major flag, in my opinion, is anything that can make you feel unsafe or unloved in the future, present or future. And I think if someone is demonstrating three smaller red flags, so that can be breaking your boundary once, a more minor boundary. That can be maybe your parents don't like them. That's a red flag. What's one more? Not tipping the server. Like those are all like more minor red flags, but those are behaviors that someone can change and maybe for the better that it's those are things that someone can change for the better over time. But more extreme and abusive behaviors are usually not changeable because just the normal cycle of abuse, it's repetitive behaviors. And usually if you let it slide once or twice, they're not going to change. They, they're going to need some type of professional help. And you don't necessarily have to be in that picture. If you are in an unsafe, if you are in an unsafe situation, you need to get out. Anyway, yeah. Um, we ended on a heavy note, but thank you everybody who gave advice and then also asked for advice. Thank you once again. The second annual Peace and Riz Lord stream. <laughs> okay, thank you. Seriously, thank you everybody who submitted. Thank you to everybody who answered the quiz, who watched the stream and submitted questions last second. Thank you. This is always a fun segment. You know, it's giving Animal Crossing vibes. I think I have more insight now. And people say I'm not educational. Okay, so before I wrap up, I'm gonna do some stills with the cue cards. That way you guys can take screenshots, okay? So I'm gonna hide chat and my sub goals. Um, I'm not gonna, I don't think I should screenshot these because they're just questions. So we'll screenshot the the actual advice, because I think those will be more helpful to people. And I might, I might post the screenshots on Twitter too. Wait, I want to. Oh wait, oops, I did the wrong key. I just want to get a square on screen so I can see. Okay, that's what... <laughs> Guys, this is my new VTuber model. Okay, so the... Oh my god, that's a square? Okay, because I'm going to try and make, like, one giant compilation. I have to be in the square. Okay, I'm going to... <laughs> and then... Here. Oh, I should make my chair taller. Okay. I expected some more crazy ones. I think we had more, like, hyper-specific stories last year. This is the tallest my chair can go. Okay. Okay, now I got it. I got it. Oh, I can see the box. Okay. So screenshot. <laughs> That's one. Yeah, crystal story. 
He was struggling. Oh, I hate this one. I'm frowning. <laughs> okay. Or should I just slay? <laughs> I'll just slay. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay, final two. Oh, this one was mine. This one was very good. Finally. The most base thing ever read on stream. Okay. I hope everybody took your screenshots. Okay. Once again, thank you to everybody who submitted. Seriously. Thank you. Okay. So, I'm going to wrap up stream here for today. I have something to do at 2, and it's already 1.30. So... If anybody wants me to write their name, you can go ahead and use your channel points or subscribe. We got a prime sub today. Thank you, Jack. So, you know the drill. We're going to do calligraphy. I am going to go live tomorrow. It'll be a short stream in like the midday or afternoon. It's going to be a bit stream. Okay. And then on Valentine's Day, either... Valentine's Day stream will be at 11 or in the afternoon. It will be another RP date stream. And I promise it's going to be a banger. So be there. Okay. Thank you both for redeeming. Also, thank you, Electra and Kobo. But you guys were here the whole time. Thank you. Smile. I like this POV. Am I cooking for the date? Um, No narcs. I will not leak. I will leak right now if I get 100 subs. Yes, sir. I, I genuinely don't want to leak about this year's Valentine's Day stream because I promise it's going to be... I'm putting my hair up. It's going to be like the best bit I've done in my whole career. You guys want to see a rare bun piece in? This is actually, doing this with your hair is really bad. Because when you do this, you're basically making all the ends of your hair rub against each other. Rare bun streamer. Oh, wait, I'm so short. <laughs> Are my roommates going to eat too? Probably not. I don't think they're going to like what I'm going to make. You know what I think would be a... Wait, <laughs> I'm not going to say the bit. This, this will be for a different day. <laughs> okay, I have another bit. Because, like, for every just chatting stream, I want to have, like, some... Either premise or bit. And I just thought of a really funny bit that I can do on a different day. Also, I noticed I have a YouTube voice now. Like, my cadence and my pacing is different. Are you and Emmy going to collab soon? I don't know. No say. Wait, I did say... When Peason has money, we'll collab. So maybe, maybe summertime I'll have money. Because she lives quite a ways from me. So it's like, if she comes visit me, like, she could just drive. But for me, I'd have to take the train. And the train is expensive. P 
piece needs to get rich, guys, go check out my art website. Go bookmark it. I'm going to start blogging on it probably in March. So make sure you go bookmark the website because there will be exclusive art content on the actual website. So that's going to be photos, videos, possibly speed paintings and monologues. Go bookmark it. Okay, also, I forgot to write Kim's name the other day. Sorry, cancel me. But I'll write it now. Well, this pen is busted. How could you forget Kim? Um, she has a job now. We never see her. Teehee. Also, like, I've changed my... My OBS, like, overlay. Because before, I used to have, like... Because right now my screen is OBS on one half in one window. And then Twitch Mod View on the other half of my monitor in a separate window. So I used to have, like one little tab for subscriptions and bits and then another tab for channel redemptions but i condensed them into one tab panel so now everything's together so if i get too many followers or channel port redemptions then i have to like scroll down to see the subs and i just forgot to scroll down that day being fully transparent i don't hate kim <laughs> unwink unwink undo No clippers. Do 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 do. Once again, thank you, Kim, for the 13-month resub. Thank you. I'm gonna snitch. You know what snitches get? Nothing. Hi, X Decision. Welcome in. Can we get some yo's? Hello. Hi, man. Um, kind of awkward that you're coming in at the end, but you can still use channel points and I'll write your name. Oh, I should change my title. Huh? We're not doing um Chad Vice anymore. While I'm getting the title changed, if you could, go watch my most recent YouTube video. Click the link, open it in a new tab, and watch it later. It's an edit of a Valentine's Day stream from two years ago. <laughs> the end? No! Don't worry, I'll be live tomorrow, smile. My goal is to stream four days a week. Dang. It's still with a two-year resub. That's crazy. I also would like to say, since you guys are watching the end of stream, I'm in a lot better headspace than I was last year on Valentine's. Because as you guys know, um, last February was when I was getting like all my diagnoses. And when I found out I had my big brain, right? So I was I was not doing good. 
But I, I feel a lot happier this year. That's why I think, like, this year's Valentine's stream was a lot more jokey. Because not that I was, like, faking being happy last year, but it was not a good time. That's good, yeah. I mean, I'm going to the doctor tomorrow. Oh yeah, I keep on thinking today is Tuesday. Because I have to go early, early tomorrow to like catch the bus to it. So like, I woke up today, I was like, I gotta catch the bus. And then I was like, actually it's tomorrow. <laughs> um, Once again, thank you Issa for the two year resub. Holy moly, that's a long time. Thank you. Yeah, tomorrow's just a regular checkup. Which is fine. I just remembered when we were doing the Valentine's Day segment, I said, watch till the end for blank. I forgot what I said. <laughs> what did I say? I think, oh yeah, I, I think I said, watch till the end for relationship advice. I think that's what I said. I would, I would never lie. Never. What, what did I say? Did I say stuff like as a joke? And then I get really scared that someone's gonna, like, take it seriously. I think it's because, like, I'm so traumatized by, like, TikTok comments. TikTok comments are, like, not the worst because IG is, is, like, genuinely, like, really hateful. But on TikTok, people just take everything seriously. Everyone's gone woke. <laughs> The lean, those are like the best numbers I've ever written. Holy moly. Oh, also we're 30 minutes into stream, so if you're here, click the follow button. You get cool emotes and you get to dive in chat. Wow, wow, wow. Even though we're wrapping up stream. Once again, thank you, Wacko Jacko, for the Prime subscription and the follow. Thank you. I did not scam you. I wrote your name. Yes, sir. Now we're going to move on to channel points. If you want me to write your name, all you must do is use your channel points. 
<laughs> Wacko Janko is such a cool name. I got scared because I saw the Jack O part and I was like, <gasps> I was like, oh no. <laughs> But usually, if someone is sus, they would not subscribe. <laughs> they would, they would like, cheer bits, but not subscribe. Wait. If you don't follow a channel, can you still cheer bits in it if it's a follow-only chat? Wait. Because, like, I know it's common for, like, people to come in and, like, abuse your TTS. Wait. Maybe that's why I don't get any, like, bit trolls. Maybe that's- why? I don't know. I'll have to ask. Well, who would I ask? I don't have a Twitch dapper. Advice color is the color Mac chose. A soft blue. Ooh, my mouse clicked randomly. That's a lovely age. Okay, we have one name left. Final call. If you want me to reach a name, all you must do is use your channel points. Oh my god, Chibli's live. I'll do... Grape. There we go. Anybody else want me to write your name? All you must do is use your channel points or subscribe. Anybody? I didn't take thumbnail screenshots. Oops. <laughs> okay. I would like to thank everybody for watching. Any chatters, lurkers? Thank you for hanging out in the annual Valentine's Day quiz stream. I hope you guys had fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I will be live again tomorrow.
another Valentine's Day stream I'm not going to leak. This one's a surprise. So if you want to watch it, make sure you're following my channel and have notifications turned on. Double check that they're turned on. Because only 50% of you guys have them turned on. So if you don't want to miss any stream I do, smash that bell. And if you want more peace and content, I have a new YouTube video. It is another Valentine's Day themed one. Try not to fall in love with me. Click the link. Go watch it now. Okay, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for watching. I had fun. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye bye. Goodbye bye. <laughs> goodbye bye bye. <laughs> I love my stutter. It's so much fun. See you later. Bye bye. Dude, Prezzo's great. Okay. Thank you guys for watching.